Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. States and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Beginning today and continuing all week, there are many new programs returning to the NBC schedule. And you'll find a couple of your old favorites in new time periods as well. Today, Theater Guild on the Air returns for the fall season on NBC with a special dramatization of The Wisteria Trees, co-starring Helen Hayes and Joseph Cotton. Later, Dragnet, the authentic stories of your police force in action, begins a new series of Sunday evening broadcasts. On Tuesday, NBC's own Red Skelton returns to the fold to bring you 30 minutes of his hilarious antics. And the same day, Tuesday, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis also begin a new series on the NBC radio network. Thursday evening, you'll find truth or consequences on a new day at a new time, too. So better check your local newspaper for the correct time of all these wonderful programs on this NBC station. Remember, today, hear both Theater Guild on the Air, co-starring Helen Hayes and Joseph Cotton, and Dragnet, for action-packed listening on NBC. Now, today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Drive-In. It is 9.45 on a Saturday night in July 1947. At a drive-in theater three miles outside Corvell, Texas, a boy in his late teens walks between the rows of cars on the darkened lot and approaches an old convertible park near the exit. In the driver's seat of the convertible, a 15-year-old girl sits watching the movie. Don't much to say. Don't Did say. Did you already leave? You turn it I got you. What's the best, Robert? Turn it off. Stick him back. Time to be watching a movie now. You might have to start driving any minute. They're really getting ready to leave. Huh? I don't know. You should have left 20 minutes ago. Oh, maybe they want to see the show again. It's a good picture. Oh, it's sure is a pretty car they got. They ought to have a lot of money. What do you think I picked it? How much money you reckon we'll get from her? How do I know? You said if we used to get $100, we could get married. Yeah. Maybe if we used to get 200 we could go to Dallas for a honeymoon. Could we, Al? Sure, baby. Because sure. I've never been at Dallas. Uh, you got your gun ready to use on there? Will you quit your yapping? Okay, okay. Don't you try to make sure everything go good? You sound like you don't even want me here. Yeah, sure I do, baby. You know that. Done nothing but yell at me the whole night. I've been trying to think. This thing has to go off just right. Now, you know what you got to do. Sure. Reckon you'll shoot them people? Maybe. To get me out of trouble. Wish I could be there when you use the gun. You'll scare them so bad they won't know. Sure, here they come. Oh, sure it's them? I've been watching the car, haven't I? Hey, this excitement. I can hardly wait. Now, don't forget, baby. Uh-huh. Pick me up at that spot I showed you. And uh-huh. remember, don't drive too close behind us. Okay, I'll... Hey, mister! Mister! Oh, what's the trouble? Uh, my, my car's out of gas. Can you give me a ride to the nearest filling station? Well, I reckon we can. All right with you, Ruth? Oh, sure, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Hop in the back, son. We'll take you. Oh, thanks a lot, mister. Well, sure glad you stopped me. My girl and me, we've been waiting 20 minutes for someone to come out. Oh. <laughs> Did you like the picture? What? Did oh, oh, oh uh-huh. yes, ma'am. Real good. We thought so, too. We almost stayed to see you a second time. I reckon I can turn on my headlights now. Eh, way they make you keep your parking lights on on these drive-ins, I almost miss seeing you standing there. Well, sure, lucky for me you didn't. That girl's supposed to be home early. Gosh, I feel like kick myself letting the car run out of gas. Eh, maybe oh. we can bring you back to the filling station. Might be a long time before you get a ride otherwise. Oh, you don't have to do that, mister. Oh, we'll be happy to do it. Oh, we, honey. Oh, of course you will. <laughs> I remember how it was. My wife's folks were always reading the riot act to me for bringing her home late. We didn't have driving movies. Shut then. up, mister. Hmm? What? Why when you, you get to the crossroad, turn left, away from town. What? Huh? Do like I say. You don't, I'm going to put a bullet right in your head. Oh, Jim. Now, Jim, look here, son. Quit that talk. Uh-huh. Now, turn left. Oh. Just so you know, I ain't fooling. I'm clicking this hammer back. Oh, you hear it, mister? What is it you want? You find a... You won't get away with this, son. I told you to quit talking. You're making a big mistake. Why don't you... Shut up! Jim, don't argue with him. Do what he says, please. He's right. You won't live, you do just what I say. 
Now drive faster. I said faster. How, how much further you want me to go? I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> have to press that gun so hard in the back of my neck. I'm keeping it right where it is. Jim, but don't argue with him. This is far enough. Stop. Now we're all getting out. Out this side, lady. <laughs> young, uh... I still got this gun cocked, mister. Now throw your wallet and purse into the car, both of us. <laughs> throw them in, I said. Okay. Now start walking down the road. You look back once and I'll plug you. But Jim, I think I'm going to... Now, 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 just hold on my arms, honey. You'll be all right. Keep walking. Half an hour later, the couple stopped the passing truck, which took them into the sheriff's office at Corvell. The sheriff, who was in another part of the county, was notified. He ordered an all-points bulletin to be sent out on the stolen car and requested the Texas Rangers to begin the investigation. Upon arrival at the sheriff's office, Ranger Jace Pearson began taking statements from the two victims. Now, I'd just like to go over a few things to make sure we have them straight. Mr. Harper, you say you had $37 in your wallet? Yeah, that's right, Ranger. And uh, Ruth had five in her purse. Oh, five and some change, Jim. It was closer to six. Uh, the boy who robbed you, all you remember about him is that he was heavy set and not too tall. Well, I know he was shorter than Ruth, and she's five foot eight. Uh, wish we could tell you more, but it was pretty dark the whole time he was with us. Couldn't get a good look at his face. Ranger, I just remembered something about him I forgot to tell you before. Don't know if it'll help. Anything will help, Mrs. Harper. Well, I did notice that he had his sleeves rolled up right to his shoulders like he was trying to show off his muscles. I see. Now about this girl the fellow said he was with. Did you... Oh, hello, Sheriff. Well, howdy, Jason. Folks, I'm sorry I wasn't here sooner, but at least I got some good news for you. Oh, what's that, Sheriff? They found your car just a few minutes ago. Oh, that's a relief. Where'd they find it, Sheriff? A couple of miles from where the holdup took place. Just got it on the radio as I was driving up. I told him I'd relay the message on to you. Well, can someone take us out there? Well, that won't be necessary, Mr. Harper. They're towing it in right now. Towing it in? Yes, ma'am, so they won't destroy any evidence. Well, I'm sure glad we've got it back. The fellow that held you folks up, was he working alone? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Harper think there was a girl in it with him. That's right. But like we told the ranger, we didn't see her. She probably followed and picked him up after he ditched your car. That sounds like the tow truck coming in now. Yeah, that's him. I expect we better get out there. I sure hope that little rat didn't get my typewriter. Typewriter? Yeah. I was bringing it home to do some work over Sunday. Put in the back seat of the car when Ruth picked me up at the office. Well, it won't be long before we know if he took it. <laughs> that boy. Seems so nice at first. Oh, it's just no telling about people, is there? No, ma'am. Uh, especially <laughs> that one. Back of my neck still hurts where he was pressing the gun against it. Oh, that kid's vicious. Real vicious. We'll do everything we can to catch him before he gets rough with anybody else. Uh, the car is right over there. I'll make you out a receipt for it. Well, you have to keep it here? Only for tonight, till the lab has a chance to go over it. Uh, we'll see that you get a ride home, folks. Uh, thanks, Sheriff. Uh, let me see. Oh, wait a minute, I... Mr. Harper. Hmm? Don't touch the door handle. It hasn't been gone over for prints yet. Oh, oh sorry, Ranger. It's all right. I'll just shine my light through the window here. Oh, just what I was afraid of. Typewriter's gone. Oh, Jim. I don't suppose you know the serial number. No, but I reckon I've got it at home with a guarantee. We'll alert dealers and secondhand stores in case he tries to sell it someplace. Uh, honey, didn't you have a package in there, too? Oh, why, yes. I almost forgot about it. Uh, a couple pairs of stockings I bought this afternoon. Where'd you buy them, ma'am? Hugger's dress shop. You mind telling us the brand and size? They were Mo Judd, size ten and a half long. You know if any other place in town carries that brand of stockings? No, I'm sure they don't, Ranger. Thanks, ma'am. I reckon we can let you folks go home now. Mr. Harper, will you phone us as soon as you find out that typewriter number? Sure will, Ranger. I'll get my deputy to give you a ride. Uh, Sandy? Yeah? Would you take Mr. and Ms. Harper home in your car? Right. Uh, thanks. Come on, honey. Oh, I sure will be glad to get home. What do you want to do tomorrow, Jace? Check with the manager of the drive-in theater? Yeah, I'd also like to talk to the owner of the shop where those stockings were bought. Now, Jace, I can understand why you wanted that typewriter number, but why did you want to know all about the stockings? It's just possible that the girl in that hold-up team will come in and try and exchange the stolen stockings for a different size. And she wouldn't have to change them if she wears the same size as Mrs. Harper. I don't think she does. The boy who robbed the Harpers is short. From what they said about him, I doubt if he's the type who'd go with a girl taller than he is. Certainly not one as tall as Mrs. Harper. 
Well, suppose the girl is short. She could still take a large stocking size. Yeah, but the ones Mrs. Harper bought were ten and a half long. Nobody but a tall person would want to wear them. You could be right, Jason. I'll phone the woman who owns the dress shop first thing in the morning. It's only a chance, but I believe it's worth a try. The following morning was Sunday. The lab crew had completed its work and found nothing that would help us. At 10 a.m., the sheriff called Mrs. Herger, the owner of the dress shop, and asked her to come down and open up her store. She agreed to meet us in 15 minutes. We went there and waited. Main Street sure is quiet Sunday morning. Uh-huh. You'd never believe this street was chock full of cars yesterday. Didn't Mrs. Herger say she was coming right down? Sure, Jace, but you know how women are. She'll be along. Sure hope she'll be able to locate the sales slip on those stockings. Yeah, we're lucky today's Sunday. If the girl does try to exchange them, she won't be able to do it till tomorrow. I believe that's Mrs. Herger's car now, coming around the corner. Yep, that's her. Hello, Sheriff. Well, howdy, Miss Herger. Oh, excuse me for being late. But Amory took off in the car and I had to wait till he got back. That's all right, ma'am. That Amory. Every time I need the car, he's got it. Sorry we had to trouble you in the first place. Oh, no trouble. Uh, you wanted to see the sales slip I made out for Ruth Harper on those stockings. Is that right, Ranger? Yes, ma'am. Well, let's go in the store. Uh, let's see, where's that key? Yeah. Oh, I always forget that burglar alarm. Here, let me get my other key and turn that thing off. Ah, there. Oh, lucky I got a couple of police officers with me. Somebody had me arrested for breaking in my own store. Would you like us to wait here while you look up that slip? Uh, no. Uh, come on over to the counter. It might take me a while to find it, seeing as how Mrs. Harper doesn't have a charge account. I'll just get my sales book. She came in here about 4 o'clock yesterday, didn't she? I believe she said it was about 5. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember now. Uh, you know what size she bought? Ten and a half long. Let's see. No, no, that's medium length. Ah, ah, here it is. Two pairs of ten and a half long. She gave me a $10 bill. What's the number on the sales slip, Mrs. Herger? Five o four o. You want to take it along, Ranger? No, ma'am. We just want to remember it. A girl may come in and try to exchange those stockings. If she does, we'd like you to phone us and keep her here till we come. Well, how am I going to do that? We leave that up to you. But it's important that she stays in this store till we get here. Well, when do you figure she'll show up? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe the next day. Maybe not at all. You think you can handle it? Well, I, I never tried anything like this before. But I'll do my best. <laughs> When we left Mrs. Herger's store, we went to see the manager of the drive-in theater. He didn't recall seeing anyone who answered the vague description of the boy which the Harpers had given us. But he did tell us the names of a number of people who had been at the theater the night before. We questioned them, and several remembered seeing a boy with his sleeves rolled up to the shoulders. He'd been with a young girl in a convertible. We took statements from these witnesses. Around 2 o'clock on Monday afternoon, we had them come into the sheriff's office to sign their statements. Here you are, Mr. Hammer. Oh, thank you. Sign all six copies, please. Yep. Uh, Miss Lindsay, here's your statement. Are you sure where to sign it, Sheriff? Uh, sure, Jace. Uh, I'll right get it. No. Ranger Pearson. This is Mrs. Herker. I can't talk loud. What is it, ma'am? There's a girl here with the same stockings I sold to Mrs. Harper. She wants to exchange them. We'll be right over. Well, I, I don't know how long I can keep her, Ranger. You better hurry. <laughs> Two or three girls in there, Jace. Any of them could be the one we're after. Yeah. I don't see Miss Herger. There she is now, coming toward the front of the store. Ranger. Ranger. Where is she, ma'am? Look over my shoulder, straight down the counter. See the one at the end with the mousy hair? Uh-huh. Where are the stockings she brought in? On the counter, right next to where she's standing. Sales slip is there, too. Thanks, Miss Herger. Hey, you were right about her not being tall. I think she's got an idea we're coming after her. Yeah, looks nervous, all right. Don't think she'll try to run for it, do you, Jason? In one direction she can go, right out this way. 
Excuse me, miss. Hey. We'd like to see those stockings. They're mine. If you don't mind, we'll take a look at the sales slip. Now, there it is on the counter, Jase. I'll get it. You leave them stockings alone. Sales slip checks out 5040. Give me them stockings. Just a minute, young lady. Where'd you get them? They're mine. We think they were stolen. Well, I didn't steal them. Maybe not, but we'd like to hear all about how you did get them. Come on, miss. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We often hear the phrase, the American way. But do you ever stop to think just what that means? Of course, it means many things. Our traditions of freedom, our democratic government, and our system of justice. But a fundamental part of the American way is our economic system. Our economic system is not perfect. That's a simple historical fact. But... The American economic system has brought greater material means for happiness to more people than any other system the world has ever known. Especially in these critical times, all of us should work to defend and improve this system. And the best way to defend and improve our economic system is to learn how it works. You can get a free booklet explaining our economy by writing to Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. Just write to Box 10... Times Square Station, New York City, and ask for your free copy of The Miracle of America. Now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Drive In. We took the girl with us. In the car, we learned that her name was Grace Maud Compton. She lived in a house on the outskirts of town with her mother, who worked as a waitress in an all-night diner. When we questioned Grace Maud about Saturday night's robbery, she was sullen and denied knowing anything about it. We decided to take her out and discuss the matter with her mother. On the way, we tried to talk to her some more. Her sullenness changed to hysteria. (laughs) I didn't steal no stockings, and I didn't rob nothing from no people in the car. Your boyfriend did, and you helped. I ain't got a boyfriend. Where were you Saturday night, Grace Maud? I keep telling you I was home. But you can't prove it. Why do I have to prove it? Why do you keep picking on me? Nobody's picking on you. You are so. Everybody's always picking on me. Your mother's not going to be very happy when she finds out you're in trouble. I ain't in trouble. Besides, you can't talk to Ma. She's sleeping. I'm afraid we'll have to wake her up. Ma, I don't like to be woke up. She gets sore when she's woke up before getting up time. That's your place up ahead? Yeah. Nice little house. That dump. Bet your Ma works hard to keep it up that nice. Don't start preaching at me. Everybody's always preaching at me. Go ahead, Grace Ma. I ain't going in there. I ain't. Come on. No. She'll start yelling at me. She'll pick on me just like you're doing. Come on, let's go. No. Now look, Grace Maud. If you haven't done anything, you don't have to be afraid. I ain't afraid. Well, then we'll just have a little talk with you and your mother. Ain't nothing she can tell you. We'll see about that. Come on. Told you I can do nothing. I ain't afraid of you or her. All right, to go in? Yeah. Joy's unlocked. All right, go get your mother. I didn't know she. That's you, Grace Maud? Yeah. Who's out there with you? I want to talk to you. It? Police officers, ma'am. I'll be right out. You see, I'll catch you. You woke her up and I'm going to catch you. Do you have anything you want to tell us before your mother comes out? There you go picking on me again. Why are you want to... All right, Grace Mom. <laughs> She's the way I look. I worked all night and I was sleeping. I'm sorry we had to wake you up, ma'am. Now, what's this all about? I didn't do nothing. Be quiet, I... Grace Maud. What's the trouble, Ranger? We think your daughter might have had something to do with a holdup on Saturday night. I didn't, I tell you, I didn't. Hold up. What makes you think Grace Maud mixed up in anything like that? She tried to exchange a couple of pairs of stockings in a store in town today. They were stolen along with some money and a typewriter. But I didn't steal them. Don't let them tell you I stole them, Maud. You be quiet. Are you sure they were stolen? There's no doubt about it, ma'am. Well, I've tried to bring her up right. I haven't been with her as much as I should be, working like I do nights. But I can't believe she'd do anything real bad. I didn't, Ma. We think she helped her boyfriend in the robbery. Boyfriend? <laughs> You've been going out with that Al again? No, I thought I'm... I told you to stay away from him. I ain't seen him in a long time. I swear I ain't. What's Al's last name, Mrs. Compton? I don't know. He works on one of the ranches near here. 
I didn't like the way he acted with Grace Maud. He's too old for her, been around too much. Why, well, she's just a kid. I ain't a kid. I'm already grown up. You're too young to be running around with men. Well, you go around with men, don't you? Why, you... Why did you talk to me like that again? I'll slap your head off. You hear me? You hear? <laughs> there you go. You're picking on me again. What's Al's last name, Grace Maud? <laughs> You're lying. I'm not. I don't know his last name, and I ain't been out with Maybe him. Maybe not, but you're not going out of this house again at night until I tell you. Oh, that ain't fair. You promised me I could go to the double feature I don't tonight. care what I promised. You're not going. Oh. I'm sorry, Ranger. You wanted to ask me some questions? Mrs. Compton, we don't want to hold your daughter if she's innocent. But she hasn't told us where she got those stockings. We hoped you'd make her understand how serious this is. Grace Maud, I want you to tell me the truth. Where'd you get those stockings? You wouldn't believe me. Where did you get them? I want the truth. I found them. Where'd you find them, Grace Maud? On the street, outside the drugstore. Why didn't you tell us this before? Because I know you'd think I stole them. Are you telling the truth? Sure, I'm telling the truth. That's what I get for trying to be nice. Nice? What you talking about? I was going to give them to you for your birthday. I found the stockings. They're so big for you, so I was trying to change them for your size. I'm sure you weren't getting them for yourself. No, I wasn't. I was just trying to surprise you. I never had no money to buy you a decent present. Well, you might if you got a job once in a while. All I was trying to do was give you something nice for your birthday and nobody believes me. Grace Maud, were you really going to give me those stockings? Sure I was. And something else you don't know. I've been looking for a job. All this week I was looking. Grace Maud, Ever I... since I found them stockings this morning, I've been thinking how you were going to like them. You don't have no pretty stockings. You don't even believe me, you know. I don't know, Ranger. I think she's telling the truth. I am. I am. I think she is too, Mrs. Compton. Looks like we could have made a mistake. Well, you had no way of knowing. We didn't mean to cause either of you any embarrassment. Forget it, Ranger. Grace Maud, I'm sorry I yelled at you before. I, I appreciate you thinking about my birthday. I'll get you something real nice. You just wait. Ma? Yeah. Can I go to that double feature tonight? I promise I won't ask you to go again until I get a job. Can I, Ma? Well, all right. I'll drop you on my way to work. Oh, gee, thanks, Ma. I reckon we'll be going, ma'am. Come on, Sheriff. Bye, Ranger. Bye, Grace Maud. <laughs> We didn't believe a word Grace Maud had said. She'd fooled her mother, and we wanted her to think she'd fooled us. We're pretty sure her plans went beyond seeing a movie that night, and we hoped sooner or later she'd lead us to her boyfriend. We waited near the house in our car till a little after seven that evening. Grace Maud and her mother came out and got into an old jalopy. We followed them into town. Mrs. Compton let Grace Maud out in front of the theater. We parked half a block down the street and waited. I reckon we got ourselves a lot of time to kill before she comes out of that picture show. Uh-huh. What if she doesn't try to get in touch with her boyfriend tonight? Uh, we just keep watching her until she does. Maybe I could get a couple of deputies to stay. Chase, she didn't go in that movie house after all. No, she's starting down the street. Yeah, right toward us. If she sees us, we're finished. Get down in the seat as far as you can. Yeah. Lucky you haven't got your horse trailer hooked on back or she'd spot us sure. Yeah, let's just hope she doesn't see the radio aerials. I can hear her now. Sounds like she's still heading this way. Yeah. Keep it low, Sheriff. Yeah. Boy, I was sure she'd notice us. Where's she going? She just turned the corner into a side street. Come on. You reckon she's going someplace to meet him now? It's hard to say. I've been thinking about this Al fella Grace Maud's mother mentioned today. Wondering if he's the one we're after. So have I. I didn't want to ask too many questions about him. Watch it going around the corner, Sheriff. Hey, Jace, with that fellow in the convertible, it's her. They're pulling away. Stay here and watch where they go. I'll get the car and pick you up in a few seconds. By the time I picked up the sheriff, the convertible was out of sight. The sheriff thought they'd headed toward the main highway leading out of town. He was right. We spotted them just past the town limits. After three miles of hard driving, we began to gain on them. Five minutes later, we were 100 yards behind the convertible. They see us, Chase. He's stepping it up a little. That's yeah, just what we're going to do. Want me to try a shot at their tires? I don't think so. We'll pull alongside of them. We're making it. Yeah. Yell at them to pull over. Pull over, you! Pull over to the side! Don't be crazy, Carla! Watch yourself. He's going to shoot. Sorry, that dirty little... Hang on, Sheriff. We'll force him over. He's 
taking a break for that brush. Stay with the girl. I'll get him. Watch out, Al. Watch out. You keep quiet, Grace Mother. Drop the gun, you. This is what I think of you, Ranger. I'm warning you. If you don't want to get hurt, come out of that brush with your hands up. I don't want to hurt you, son. Drop that gun and come out with your hands up. This is your last chance. Yeah! Oh, my shoulder. Give me that gun. Now get up. Oh, my shoulder. Get up. Let's go. Oh, he hurt you. Oh, listen to that. Oh, is he happy? Shut up, you big mouth. Come on. Oh, your shoulder's weak. Oh, you touch on real quick. Handcuff them together, Sheriff. I wish there was something I could do for you. It's not enough. I wish I had my gun. I'd put a slug right through your stupid head. (laughs) Come on, Sheriff. Let's get these two back to town. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. NBC means comedy. And Tuesday's the day this week for you to start laughing with Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis and Red Skelton. That's right. This Tuesday evening, you'll hear both these great comedy programs when they begin the new fall season on NBC and this station. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis will have Rosemary Clooney as their guest this Tuesday evening. And Miss Clooney will sing her popular version of Botchamy. Red Skelton promises a visit from Junior, the mean widow kid, and Deadeye, America's favorite cowpoke. Thursday evening, don't be surprised when you hear truth or consequences, for this popular program has switched days and is now a regular Thursday evening feature on the NBC Radio Network. And today, Sunday, there's more big news for listeners. Theater Guild on the Air returns today with Helen Hayes and Joseph Cotton, co-starred in the Theater Guild production of The Wisteria Trees. Another important program note is this one. Dragnet has moved to Sunday. Yes, hear Dragnet tonight on NBC. Now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. A typewriter identified as the one stolen from Jim Harper was found among Al Bennett's possessions. Bennett confessed to the robbing of Harper and his wife, naming Grace Maud Compton as his accomplice. Grace Maud was sent to the state school for girls at Gainesville. Al Bennett was convicted of armed robbery and is now serving a 25-year term at Huntsville Penitentiary. Now, here is an important announcement from the star of our show, Joel McRae. Folks, tonight marks the concluding performance, for a while at least, of Tales of the Texas Rangers. We've really enjoyed bringing these stories to you and hope that someday we'll be back with you again. To NBC and its affiliated stations, to Colonel Homer Garrison, Jr., Chief of the Texas Rangers, to Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez, our technical advisor, and to all the Texas Rangers and members of the Department of Public Safety, our grateful thanks. And we're particularly grateful to those of you who've taken the time to send us your cards and letters. After all, they are the only sure way of telling that you liked our show. Thanks, folks. Thanks a lot. Good night. You have just heard Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of The Texas Rangers. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Tonight, attend the premiere of Theater Guild on the Air over NBC.